Hello and welcome to Dissection with Fantasy Team. In this edition, we're taking the ninth preseason ranked team by me, the Zips. Last season, he finished in fifth place, 19 games out of first. I projected him to finish eight, so I was a little bit off. He was a little bit better than I thought he would be. Um, now, in in efforts to please him, I do have a 2000. Or yeah, 2000, a 1903, circa 1903 hat for him, Yankee hat, and a retro font Yankee jersey for him. And hopefully he likes that because he's not going to have a lot to like about what I have to say about his fantasy team. But, so, why am I so down on him? Well, you're just going to have to wait and stay tuned to find out. team had a knack for winning the small ball categories. Singles, batting average on base percentage. Um, the actual offense wouldn't wow you, but he had, he had guys who would put up the small ball numbers and he would win those categories. And that's probably why his team wasn't that sexy to look at. And his, his pitching staff was always a little bit better than I thought. And I think that's why he's overachieved over the last couple of years. However, I like to call him the Jerry Jones of this league because he's made some moves this offseason that just make absolutely no sense. And he definitely has worsened his team. Um, for a guy who needs batting average as much as he does, he only has one guy on that team who hit 300 last year. And that guy's Ben Revere. I'm not sure if he's going to hit 300 again. So as, uh, let's, let's divulge farther into this. Let's go to our first segment with Sean and, and see, see if we can figure out what the problem is with this team. 10 questions with Sean. It is that time once again. Let's start out with number 10. Will Billy Butt. <laughs> I, just, I just said butt. <laughs> that was a pretty funny one. Uh, yes. Um, will Billy Butler rebound from his disappointing 2013 season? Uh, let's just say sort of. Uh, uh, he did have a 374 on base percentage last year, so that's nothing to sneeze at. Um, I mean, I guess his 15 home runs last year is what sort of scared people away. You know, 82 RBIs is a low RBI total. Um, like I said, I don't think he... Honestly, I think that might be what he is. I, and that's not terrible. Um, but, I mean, to be one of the top fantasy producers for his team... That's where we get into the problems. Will Kendry Morales ever find a team to play on? Ever. The more time that goes by, I don't think he's going to. I think Scott Boris is going to make him wait until after the draft to actually try to get, you know, a, a long-term deal. So he has no fantasy relevance this year. No. Will Michael Walker's... Walker? I should... Well... Here. Well, Michael Walker, Walker, Walker's <laughs> dream run continue. <laughs> yeah, will his dream run continue? Ask the question. Yeah. Yes, the dream run will continue. Uh, he's basically going to be, you know, a 1A for St. Louis, and he will anchor Zip staff, which isn't that deep, unfortunately for him. Will Martin Prado be enough for third base for Team Zips? Oh, he needs another third baseman like yesterday. I mean, Prado's okay. And again, you need to have other superstars to build around. If all you have is Prado, you need more than that at third base. What do you think is the strength of the team Zips? Zips, what a weird... Zips? Is that really the team's name? Zips? This one's actually an easy question to answer. It's his bullpen. Uh, Rodney, Nathan, Perkins, Balfour. All money closers. He has a very strong bullpen. That will be the best part of Zip's team. What will Stalin Castro actually give to a team this year? 
Um, as a Cubs fan, probably not much. Uh, he went from being drafted in th- in th- like third round ish area last season to now he's fallen to seventh or eighth round. He should be lower than that. Two eighty four last year. No, that wasn't his batting average. That was his on base percentage. Are you kidding me? This guy just doesn't care. Okay, that's the problem. He's like Robbie Cano without any of the talent. All right, he's not good, and no, he's get rid of him now. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot to number the other questions, so I'm going to begin that now. Uh, yeah, number four. The, 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 a lot of responsibilities for an old man. It's just tough to do. So yes, number four. What scares you the most about this team, other than it's offense? That it's offensive. <laughs> Actually, this is another easy question. Uh, Casimir and Miner both might start the season on the DL. Not doesn't seem like it's anything too serious, but hey, DL for pitchers is always a scary thing. Um, Martin Perez, what exactly are you getting out of him this season? Uh, uh, I mean, Paxton was good for the last, I don't know, month and a half of last year, but is that going to carry over? He's not really a strikeout pitcher. His numbers seem like they were too good for a guy who doesn't strike out a lot of batters. And... I mean, really, Avon Nova is, like, his second-best pitcher behind Waka. I, I'm not digging this pitching staff. I mean, it's definitely, you know, lower-tier pitching staff in our league. Number three, what do you think Team Zips could do via free agency to improve its team? That's a very long question. Well, this kind of relates to the last question, pitching depth. There's all kinds of free agent pitchers out there. Go get you some. Number two, what does Team Zips need other than a new team name, <laughs> what does Team Zips need to make the playoffs? Divine intervention. And the number one question, do I really need to make eight more of these? I, I, there's so many other things I could be doing, Jason. Please, give me something to do other than ask questions. No? Yes, you do, Sean, but come on, isn't it so much fun? I mean, like, let's look at our next segment. Players who should not be owned. No fantasy for you. No, none. I actually only have one of these. Kobe Rasmus. This guy was a number one pick in 2005, and he is not any, He's not coming anywhere close to that. Speaking of number one picks, you know, you guys, guys and your prospects, here's another one who never really, you know, Kobe Rasmus, nine years later, uh, should I be really be on a fantasy team? And no, no. I mean, obviously, he couldn't get past his daddy issues in St. Louis, and he's never really become anything great now. I mean, last year he hit 22 home runs and... Like, almost 500 at-bats, but he hit, hit, hitting 260, you can find that on the free agent list in a 10-team league. So, yeah, Colby Rasmus, not ownable. <laughs> oh, the Grandy Man. Absolutely, it's the Grandy Man. He's going to change his swing. This dude's too smart to go into New York saying, I'm going to hit as many home runs as I hit before. No, not happening. He will change his swing. He's not going to hit 229 like he did last year. I've seen some of the projections of him hitting 240 and stuff. Like, no, no, no. He'll do better than that. Like I said, he'll change his swing. He's not going to be the 30 to 40 home run guy that he was at Yankee Stadium at Citibank. Not going to happen. But I do believe this guy can, you know, hit maybe like 260, 270 and be in the... The, the, the 20 to 30 home run range with a lot of extra base hits and and, and steals, too. I mean, dude can run. I, I think I, I think he'll actually be fi- fantasy viable this season. Bust. Let me tell you a secret. Another thing you need to know about this team, and the reason why I think it's going to be a bust of a team, is that the highest ranked Yahoo preseason guy on the team, Ian Kinsler. Ian Kinsler's numbers have been Texasized over the years, okay? Last year, you started seeing the decline. That's why Texas bailed, okay? 13 home runs and 500-plus at-bats in Texas. <laughs> Come on. Need to do better than that. And you take away his home runs, because obviously they're going to go down playing in the coldest division in the world. Seriously. There's other divisions that have cold weather cities, but they have domes. You've got Detroit, you've got Minnesota, you've got Chicago, you've got Kansas City. I feel like I'm missing one. I can't think who it is right now off the top of my head, but whatever. It's cold weather all the way through that division. So you're playing in cold weather constantly. It's not a good home run division. So Ian Kinsler's already numbers, his home run numbers are going to be way down. 
His steals are going to go down because he's getting older. And here's the biggest stat of all. Last season, hit 292 in Texas, hit 260 on the road. Guess what? You're not in Texas anymore, Ian Kinsler, and your numbers are going to be bustful. Why all the hate for this Kinsler fellow? What did he ever do to you? Get out of here, Sean. Nobody asked you. You're done. Your segment's over. We need to move on to more scarier things, more serious things. Right now is the time to hide the women and children if you don't want them to hear what Ira has to say. Ira's Island. You're such as <laughs> hide the women and children again. <laughs> okay, first of all, you're such a zipped hater. It just makes absolutely no sense to me. I mean, you would think you'd learn your lesson after being wrong on him two years in a row. But apparently, <laughs> third time's not a charm for you, is it there, buddy? Now, uh... Okay, think of it this way. Ian Kinsler isn't going to suddenly forget how to hit now that he's going to Detroit, okay? He's still in a stack lineup. Ian Kinsler's still going to be really good, okay? You've already talked about how you think uh, Granderson's going to be good. You, Someone you didn't even talk about? Alex Gordon. Alex Gordon hits like 40 doubles. And he's coming into his own, and he's the, he's the second-ranked fantasy player for Yahoo. For his team, that's a good guy. Uh... I mean, two other guys. Dexter Fowler in Houston still going to put up numbers. He's going to fill up all kinds of stat categories. And and Calhoun, you know, he's, he's batting second or top of the order, whatever, for the Angels. Salvador Perez is one of the best offensive catchers. This offense is a lot better than you're giving it credit for, okay? And, and yeah, okay. I'll give you that his pitching's weak. I mean, when Von Nova's your second best starter, oh, it's kind of a nervous situation. I, I get that. But you know he's going to make moves and make it better. And I know I guess you really can't assume that the moves are going to be made throughout the season. But I, I, I think he has a shot at contending. Um, so, yeah, it's not near as bad as you think. Let's put it that way. Um, and, uh, yeah, this, this was Ira Blog with... No, hold on. Uh, I can do that. Uh, okay. This is Ira Blog on Ira's Island. I'm not on the island, am I? I guess I'm, well, I'm on the show. Okay. Uh, this was this is Ira Blog from Ira's Island. That doesn't sound right either. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. I, one more chance. I'll get it right this time. Okay. This is Ira Blog signing off. That's what I needed. That's what I needed. Okay. This is Ira Blog signing off. For Ira's Island. Darn it. Hold on. This is Ira's blog signing off from Ira's Island. And yes, ladies, I, I am single. <laughs> Call me. You know, for once, I actually 100% agree with everything that Ira said. If all of those things happen, Zips makes the playoffs. But there's just way too many things to happen. There's just no way. When I first started reviewing these teams, I thought... There was a drop off from nine to ten. There actually, okay, there still is a drop off between nine and ten. Ten is that bad. Murderers Row is that bad, but actually, it's three levels. There's eight, then there's nine, then there's ten. Zips is on the outside looking in. I cannot see any way, shape, or form unless this team does a complete overhaul during the regular season. Does it make the playoffs? So, with that said. Hope everybody enjoyed it. We've got number eight coming in the next couple of days, and it's going to be absolutely shocking as to who it is because it's definitely by far the most handsome guy in the league. See you later. Bye.